All right, back on the Dream Daddy. Back with the dreamiest of daddies. Amanda and I sit on the couch, trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh, cool. Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers is on. We've been here before. Oh, wait, we have, yeah. Yeah, we've been here already. All right, I'm just going to... Uh, we're gonna fast just, forward. Just, yeah, um... This is all in the last episode. Yeah, if you need a recap. I mean, hopefully you're marathoning it. That would <laughs> that would be a, a huge honor to me. That would be very nice. Yeah. Are we getting bins right now, you think? Moving pictures is hand down the best Rush album. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How is that advice? That's not a tip. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, my dad has only a little bit of an opinion on Rush. Does your dad, like, love Rush? No. My dad's a classic rock fan. Yeah, he's not really a prog rock guy. No. Down my dog goes. Mm -hmm. Pops off on our own adventure. Yep. Let's go and start my own Let's Play channel. Um, <laughs> also, I'm eating gummy bears. Just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been a day. If you hear any, if you hear any chewing, like it's just gummy bears. I'm yeah. gonna try not to, you know, give you guys misophonia or anything. But is that what that's called? Yeah, <laughs> like the the dislike of like hearing people chew. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well. Oh, sorry. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. <laughs> you have never, ever let me have five more minutes. So, get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting my, the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, are you excited for the cookout today? <laughs> oh, God. Excuse me. Good Lord, man. No, I was joking. So, are you excited for the cookout? There you go. Excited to beef up my grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited. Uh... What do you think? Norbert's a pretty anxious guy, so maybe it's this one? Yeah. That's a bad attitude. Do you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Wow. It really oh, is Norbert. me. <laughs> Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Hmm. The social butterfly. <laughs> I thought she said the socialist butterfly for yeah. a second. <laughs> Whoa. Well, we better start getting ready. We don't want to be late. What? No. We have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? I love being early, but as I get older, I'm starting to appreciate the art of arriving fashionably late. Well, I will only... So, okay, here's my rule of thumb. If you're meeting up for plans, like if you're going to like an amusement mm -hmm. park, or if you're going to like mm -hmm. movie theaters, like no, on, that's on time. Mm -hmm. That's on time. Mm -hmm. That's time sensitive, so you yeah. have to be on time. Yeah. You're going to a house party, you're going to a dinner party, be like five to ten minutes late yeah like, that's not a big deal i just don't like being the first person to show up at like parties and cookouts because then it's just like you and the host yeah for like an hour before all the fashionably late people show up it's unless like, it's no, like just be the fashionably late person especially if it's someone you're not entirely comfortable with like yeah if i, if I went to like one of my best friend's house it wouldn't be a big deal matter yeah. of fact i'd probably go early yeah but if i'm going somewhere i've never met nah man nah fuck that nah fuck that that's why hosting parties is the worst, because there's, there's, you're always gonna get, because there ha someone has to be the first person to arrive, right? Yeah. So yeah, if you're the host, it's a, it's impossible not to go through that scenario. Oh, I know. It's so true. fuck parties. It's, it's 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 hard. You know what? We're going early, just because you said that. What did I just say, Norbert? <laughs> <laughs> I head out the door, and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a terrible cook. That if it doesn't involve a grill, he's the you know what? Know your strengths, dude. Yeah, this is everybody not can me. appreciate a good veggie or fruit plate. Wow, this guy's got a nice backyard. Mm -hmm. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people, and the smell of hot dogs mm -hmm. wafts through the air. Wafts. Small children run through a sprinkler, and adults chat in small clusters. Cute. I set our veggie plate down on the table next to two other veggie <laughs> plates. Uh, hey, there's Joseph. I wait to get his attention. The moment sees us. Uh, the moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms oh, open man, wide. Oh man, I forgot the voice that we gave for Joseph. It was uh, Zap Brannigan. Uh, okay. Zap, Zap Brannigan. Welcome. I'm so glad the two of you are here. W is that the one? Yeah, I kind of went for like a Zap Brannigan voice for him. Okay. Yeah. And you brought veggies. <laughs> Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Hi. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Oh. He's like, I was in the middle of something. This is Christian and Christy. Oh, They're twins. Buddy. Huh? 
Oh. <laughs> hey, shining children. Yeah. They stare creepily and say nothing. Oh, my God. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Chris. We cannot end up with this guy, Cam. We Wait, can't. Where is Chris? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. God damn. Oh. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. Oh, shit. I should have guessed with the cross around her neck. Yeah. Well, I was wondering why there was a cross around her neck. Oh, no. It's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? They're Mary and Joseph? Oh, I, I didn't catch that. <laughs> That's pretty clever, actually. Yeah. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. If you fucking tell anyone, I think fuck you, I'll kill you. <laughs> I mean, she did this at the local bar! I know. Okay, it's that's like, your voice. Okay. I'll have to go look for him. What? You'll have to... Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Oh. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Norbert, and his daughter, Amanda. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. Oh my. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> nice to, uh... <laughs> oh, God. Meet you, Mary, for the first time. <laughs> Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh, God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph <laughs> knows that Mary knows that I know. <laughs> it takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. <laughs> <laughs> My wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Yeah, meet you. Yeah, I mean, I already fucked one. <laughs> hey! Yeah! Ho, ho, hey, whoa, we, whoa, wow. Well. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick some of the devil, pick out some of the deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. That's right. Ugh. I don't want to have to make friends. Ugh. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? My right hand. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Oh my god, who is raising who, Norbert? <laughs> Dad. Uh, they're going to talk about the weather. <laughs> go do it. Make a friend. Oh my god. I actually, I'm 100% on Norbert's side. <laughs> But how, but how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's, that's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Wow. <laughs> Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party, and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. I mean, all of the daddies live yeah, in the same Yeah, all fucking... the daddies live on the same cul-de-sac. Yeah. So. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, dang. Robert's here? Oh, shit. Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Fuck that guy. I actually like that guy. Isn't that the guy who's throwing a fit in Death, Goth, and Beyond? <laughs> Isn't that Amanda see Why is this oh, is every yeah, daddy is. here? Hey, I know Craig. <laughs> but wait a second. All these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I better investigate. Sure is right. Who should we talk to? Hmm. Oh, God, I don't remember any of their names. <laughs> so um, D Damien and Joseph. Joseph is the pastor. I think Damien, Damien is, is the, the guy goth. he had sex with. No, Robert is the guy he had sex with. Right. Robert's got to be assessed. Damien is the guy in um, um, Dead, Goth, and Beyond or whatever. I'm down for Matt, Hugo, and Craig because yeah, I like Matt already, and Craig. He already knows Craig, too. Yeah. So, yeah. That's what I would do, right? Yeah. You, you gravitate towards someone you know. Yeah, and then they're talking to other people, and that way you can get introduced to new people <laughs> through the person that you already know. Also, a fourth oh, option. Burger time. Burger time. Just eat, just scarf a fucking burger down. Yeah. Never oh. know. Matt and Hugo seem involved oh, yeah. in intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I have a call over to say hello. Oh, my God. I forgot almost all of them. Uh, Hugo has a British accent. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they, unique, they are a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of the time and place, and try to make something like, say, the, Rocco, the, the Rococo Ro period, Rococo. Rococo period, and compare it to postmodernism in America. You're completely disregarding the context of which a work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem so busy talking that they don't seem to notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> I still have this baby strapped to me. Yeah. Uh, I guess we should talk to Craig, right? Sure. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. Ah, how'd resistance training go the other day? Great! Little River here is a great cheerleader. Aren't you, tiny bro? Craig grabs River's arms and waves them around. Cute! <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Oh. You can do it, Dad! I'm so proud of you! I'm sorry for pooping on you! <laughs> <laughs> she must be a handful at that age. Oh, they always are. 
but it's so worth it. Are you wearing sweatpants, Craig? <laughs> no, he's wearing joggers. Okay. <laughs> Craig grabs River's arms and waves them around. I'm also sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. How you? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Is River just Cartman from <laughs> South Park? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's sorry for pooping on you, Dad. <laughs> uh, how are you settling in? Almost done. Place is perfect. What do you think? We're pretty comfortable with this guy. Almost Maybe, done. Almost done? No. Yeah. <laughs> There's still a few odds and ends to take care of before I really call myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. Hmm. <laughs> we did livable throughout the entirety of college. Ah, uh, fair. Yeah, my goal was for Amanda to live in the sort of life that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a palate oh. cleanser between different types of pizza. Oh. That's disgusting. Um, but that gives me throwbacks to when you insisted that pizza pizza was a good kind of pizza. Okay. It was the only thing that you would order when we lived in Waterloo. That's not entirely true. Yeah, it's entirely true. No, it's not. I ate a lot of pizza 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 in that basement. Yeah, but we also, we you know, whatever. I'm not going to get into a fight about you with, with pizza. Basically, you're lucky I still love you. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I think about that all the time. Yeah. She still does, though. Hey, she takes after her dad. <laughs> I'll have you know I'm a blue cheese man. <laughs> Norbert, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's, uh, it's pretty nice. Everyone's been super friendly. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds, and waving them into little flower crowns. Weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize drives over to us. What is it, sweetheart? Oh, it's, your, it's Matt's fucking, daughter. I fucking love. She's so I cool. I love this setup. Can I voice her? Yeah, of course. Okay, um... Hmm. Oh my god. Okay. Don't um, think too hard. Yeah. It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. <laughs> Is this the same voice as your dad? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sound the same? Yeah. Well, there's only one way to find out. Yeah, you're really leaning, leaning into the Karamo thing, and I like it. I, ooh, I want him to sound like Karamo so it just, bad. It sounds like he's on a game show all the time. Yeah, it's just yeah. Like, That's really great, honey. Now, if you come with me, yeah. we'll move it on to the next section. <laughs> Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Aww. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mmm. Nope, but you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Ooh. Ha! Hey, Norbert, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmen Sita. That's a cute name. That's a cute name. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Oh, her. Oh, good. They're friends. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Yeah. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda. You remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, your, your, your teacher? <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Oh. Yep. You still gonna get mad at me? You still going to get mad at me over that overdue term pick? You still gonna get me that overdue... Okay, yeah. Whatever. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Great seeing you! Yeah, I can't really see with my microphone today. Mm -hmm. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. Mm -mm. <laughs> she learned the finger gun move from me. I'm very proud. Oh. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which... Where did my son go? I oh, thank God somebody in here has a son. Hugo looks around the party. As I'm lying, Joseph has sons. <laughs> he must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. Whoa. Ernest. Of course. Ernest Hemingway Vega. Of course. Of course. Are of you course. smoking? Oh. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. No. <laughs> I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and flicks it into the gutter. Hmm. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest, and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. He starts violently hitting him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really scary. Yeah. Kids, right? Hey. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly burned down half the yard. Wow. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually, he actually <laughs> burned down half the yard. <laughs> and then it spread over onto my lawn and burned down half of my uh, yard, too. Uh, Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Look at this guy. Whew. Hmm. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Norbert, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. You can divorce him if you want. Sure. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Oh, <laughs> uh, nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? 
Oh. Ernest? Okay, okay. I'm in eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. This little boy was smoking a cigarette and, and, and he's in the yeah. eighth grade? Man, sometimes it starts that early. That's fucked up. I have friends who started smoking pot in eighth grade. That's crazy. Yeah. That That's like... That's when they started, for real. And like, you know... I mean, fucking Kitchener. I but... have a pretty positive attitude when it comes to pot, but that is way too young to start smoking pot. Yeah. Like, holy shit. And like, they were they did this thing where they like took... They, they, they took a hit of a joint from a stranger. Oh. And it was laced with LSD. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That wasn't, like, embellished at all? No. And wow. they still smoke weed. It was described as, quote, the best high they've ever had. Oh, my God. Yeah. Whatever. No, it was fucking gross. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Good for you. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Yo, I actually preach, though, Ernest. Yeah, same. Ouch. <laughs> Ernest! Oh, yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Well, you kind of are being a little punk right now. Ernest puts some. I mean, I didn't in. even mention the economy once. You just kind of put that on me. But... <laughs> I mean, we're, we're actually talking about the time you almost lit the barbecue on Yeah! Time. And Storm's off to stand at the corner. Well, that was uh, certainly something. He seems nice. Hmm? I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad. And he clearly resents me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? Let's unpack that. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna build an exercise where we stack potted plants one on top of the other on top of the other, and as the plants die, it represents the pressure that we put on ourselves to be the perfect parent. Cut to like a montage. He's like <laughs> drinking some tea, like writing in a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna teach Hugo that you can only be as good as you want to be, and you know what? That's enough because you are enough. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Matt. Th Matt, thank you. Matt? Matt? Thank you, Matt. What? I'm cool as a cucumber. See, that right there, you can't say that. I don't know. <laughs> my, kid, my kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? I mean, we're, well, you guys are all, like, in incredible <laughs> shape and have impeccable yeah. fashion sense. And great career tracks. Yeah, like, like... <laughs> you guys are all doing great. Yeah. I, uh, don't know. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Jesus. Th okay. Yeah. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. She's that old? She's, going, she's, out, she's going off to college. Oh, good point. Yeah, yeah. I'm 18. Yeah. I, 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 always, I have a late birthday, so I was actually 17 in first year. Mm, for like fair. a week. So. See, I have an early birthday. So I was like, I, I turned 19, like, in the middle of the school year. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh -huh. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda! I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. <laughs> I, I see your point. <laughs> as much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, l look at me in earnest. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when we won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Oh. Don't let us eat up your time, Norbert. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. N oh, no, I... Bye. <laughs> guys, guys, I was kind of leaning on you for... Oh, okay. <laughs> fuck, I wouldn't pick them first if I knew that we had to fucking... Yeah. Go this shit. Well, anyway, we're at 19 minutes, so we're going to kill this oh, episode. Oh, shit, <laughs> yeah. And next time, we're going to go talk to... Robert and Brian. Robert and Brian? Just go down the list. But yeah. if we, we got to go through them all, then we may as well just go top to bottom. Brian. Who's Brian? Brian... Let's see here. We've talked to the teacher. Well, because Joseph guy. and Damien is vampire and mm -hmm. church boy brian is the big guy right the big guy that we competed against yeah, yeah, yeah. and then lost I because like his him. daughter is more accomplished like than our daughter design. and he, she's only 10 mm -hmm. and yeah <laughs> all right well, anyway next time